Welcome back friends. I've got about 7,073, 400 rounds through my Dillon XL750 over here. Uh, made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot of stuff along the way. I thought I'd pass some of that stuff on to you guys, especially if this is the first progressive press you bought. Uh, it wasn't all that long ago that my uh, shooting mentor, my buddy that has gotten me into this thing and my wife says I gotta quit playing with because it's costing too much money. Uh, he was saying when, when I first started competitive shooting, he goes, yeah, you'll, you'll be reloading before long. And I'm going, no, not going to happen. I'm just going to continue to buy my Phoenix ammo and bulk and everything will be great. And uh, here we are. <laughs> so anyway, I do enjoy it. Uh, but there are some things uh, that you need to know, you know, before you buy it and while you're waiting for it to come in and when it does come in, I thought I'd pass some of those things on to you. First thing is, uh, after you purchase the press of your choice, it doesn't have to be a Dillon, can be anybody else's, but we're gonna talk about Dillon today. Go to the Dillon uh, website or the Dillon YouTube channel and watch the videos that they have. Specifically, if you're gonna get a 750, watch those. They've got an unboxing video, they've got a video on how to set up your dies, they have a video on how to produce a bullet, and those things are just, they're fantastic. Watch that video while you're waiting for your stuff to come in. And then when you're done with that, watch it again. So when you get your notice from uh, Dylan or UPS or however it's gonna come in saying, hey, uh, we've got a package arriving for you tomorrow, watch it again. Because once you get that box, you know, from the Brown Truck or FedEx or whoever, and you start opening it up, you're gonna be real familiar with everything that's in the box, how it goes together, and how to set everything up. Those videos are awesome. There's a whole bunch of other stuff too we're gonna to go over, so let's get into that right now. Now, before you hit the buy button on your new Dillon Press, there are a lot of things on their website and in the little blue press catalog. Just tons and tons of accessories for this thing, add-ons and so forth that you can buy. And I know it's real easy just to hit the buy button on all that stuff, but start off with the basics. You don't need a lot of that stuff. And once you get a few thousand rounds under your belt, then you can go buy some of the other stuff. Now here's some of the things I would tell you not to buy when you first start out. First thing is you don't really need, uh, say, a light kit. I've just got basic little clamp on light here. I had a couple of these in stock and I put in the appropriate wattage bulb. I can see everything that I need to see. The LED kits that come uh, from the aftermarket and from other places, they, they go down through here, you got cords out here, you gotta have power supply for it. And some people say it's even too bright in here. And uh, they'll actually block off some of the lights to kinda you know, dim down the lighting a little bit. Just start off with something like this. Try out this handle here first. I love this handle. Reminds me of my old days in the 70s slamming third gear in my 65 Chevelle. They have a ergonomic handle, and if it was such a big pain, with this handle in the first place, why didn't they just put the other handle on there as a standard item? Just saying, I don't think you need that. Start out with this, see how it works for you. Don't get the auto case feeder for $300. Wait and see how everything works, get used to loading cases yourself, and then later on, if you really feel the need for it and you think it's worth 300 bucks, then buy the auto case feeder, or put it on their Christmas card list, or. Hanukkah, Ramadan, or birthday, or whatever, because your relatives are always saying, we never know what to buy you. So there you are, you can fix that up. Get me an auto case feeder. So just wait, don't get all the crazy stuff. Matching trays, you know, the matching blue plastic trays. Uh, this is a $5 one from Walmart, kitchen department, Rubbermaid, works great for me. Uh, of course, they have a, an elevated mounted tray here. If you are standing, I'm sitting, you know, you might need that. You don't need to buy the extra hex key set with a little tool holder that mounts back here. This thing comes with a complete set of hex wrenches for this entire press. So you're, you're already get, gonna get one of these free. So no sense in spending $39.95 for another set just because it has a blue matching piece of plastic here, you know, don't get excited about this stuff. Buy only the things that you need to get started and go on from there. There are, however, some things that you, I would say you absolutely need to buy while you have them on the phone, because you're gonna need them anyway and it's gonna make your life a lot easier. First thing is, 
This is a spare parts kit for this particular press. They make them for every press. It's got 38 different parts in here and multiples of some of those. Just about anything that's ever going to break on this press. I've already broken some stuff in here and uh, came in handy. Let me tell you, I could just dig in there, get what I need, continue on about my business. The next thing I think is an absolute must item, extra primer tubes. The kit comes with two and uh, so that'll give you 200 primers. So I've got five and every time I sit down at the bench, I've got 500 tubes ready to go. So I'm cranking out, you know, ammo at about 100 rounds every six minutes and I got to stop loading some more primer tubes. If I have to go and put them in a flip tray and do all that stuff, it just kills the rhythm, makes it not fun. I guarantee you, you'll want to have some of these in stock. Go ahead and buy them. They're cheap. While you got them there on the phone, be ready to go. Now, as far as from uh, other places, so that's all your, kind of your Dylan stuff ready to go. Go out and get you some case gauges. Now, I, I load 38 Special and 9mm. This one happened to be a Hornady. This is a Dillon. I bought it when I bought the press. And I prefer stainless steel, but get you some good case gauges. This is your quality control department. This is the last thing that your bullet's going to see before it goes in your ammo can. Buy yourself also a decent scale. This one happens to be from Frankfurt Arsenal. They make a lot of reloading accessories, so they know what they're doing. It is not expensive. And you've got real cheap scales up to the, about the $50 range. Then they jump up into the $125 to $175 range. And then from there, they go up to $500 or more. For reloading pistol, and it's only going to a tenth of a grain, this thing is great. I took it over to one of my buddies who's a bench rest guy and he's got one of those super expensive scales and we compared the, the tolerance on this to his scale and this thing was right on. It was great. It does come with a little cheesy tray that I kind of ditched for this Lyman. I splurged and spent $7.95. I like this one a lot better. But this is a good little scale. Don't try to go cheap on it and buy the cheapest one on Amazon. Bullet puller. You will need a bullet puller in your reloading career. You can start off with one of these. If you're ordering a Frankfurt Arsenal scale, go ahead and get one of these. They're uh, $19.95, I believe. Work pretty good as long as you're doing just a, a few. But if you get into a situation where you got to pull a bunch, you might need something like this. And uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Another thing you want to get, get a decent pair of dial calipers. I like the digital ones. Once again, don't go to Amazon and buy Amazon's favorite or Amazon sponsored for $19.95. You can get a good pair for between, I mean a really good pair made in Japan between 40 and 50 bucks. And you're going to need these uh, once again for the duration of your reloading career. Don't go cheap on that. So what I'm trying to say is there are things that you really need to buy on the front end. Go ahead and get that done. Be done with it. Other things can wait. Wait till you get some rounds under your belt. Decide what you want and then go from there. The thing about this press is it is designed to run forever. Cycle thousands and thousands of rounds. But if you feel something going wrong, it's because there is something wrong. Stop immediately what you're doing. Try to figure out what the problem is. Real easy stuff, like for instance, uh, I'll have a 40 cal try to sneak through here. You know, it got, I'm picking up range brass. And of course, it doesn't want to go into the shell plate. That's an easy fix. Just take that and remove it. The other thing that happens to me, and more than I'd like, is I'll get a 380 in there. I mean, 380 and 9mm after a while looks like the same round on the ground. And it'll go in here and it'll go through and get deprimed, no problem. And then I'll put a primer in it. But when I go up here to get some powder in it, it doesn't feel like all the rounds that I've been doing feels different. Well, once again, if something feels wrong, it is wrong. It doesn't go all the way up, so I get a lot pull on the, uh, on the powder funnel. Stop what you're doing, because if I don't stop, then it gets a bullet right here, and then it gets seated, and then I gotta go take it apart with my buddy Billy Bullet Puller later on. 
Another thing that you'll see, and once again, if you see it, stop. If you see any grains of powder right here, or anywhere up here, that's a problem. Stop and find out what the problem is. Uh, you obviously have a round going through there that doesn't have a primer. Hopefully you're gonna catch it here or here, because if it dumps into your loaded round tray over here, you're gonna have to pull it out. There's gonna be powder all in here and there's gonna be powder all over your other bullets and you're gonna have to wipe all those bullets down because you get a grain or two of powder on there, it's not gonna go through your case gauge properly. So it's just kind of a hassle. So if you see something, once again, I've said it more than once now, if you see something wrong, if you feel something wrong, if it locks up, stop. Under no circumstances do you force the handle. If you do, you're gonna be digging in that spare parts bag to try to figure out what's going on. Another thing I've noticed about this press is, for instance, these little Allen head screws, they are not plated. They will rust. We're here in Texas. We've got a little humidity from time to time. I've just kind of wiped them off, put some CLP on a Q-tip, hold them up, wiped it off, and never had a problem since then. Same thing for this handle. This handle is not plated. I had to, uh, before I noticed that it was rusting, I had to get some steel wool and clean that off. CLP, wipe it down, wipe it off. Never had a problem since then, but just kind of be on the lookout for that. Last thing I want to talk about is something that uh, I know us men don't want to talk about. It's against all man law, and that is consulting the manual. Now, I'll just keep it between us girls here, but I'm telling you, everything you want to know about this press, or at least everything that I want to know about this press, and let me tell you, I made a bunch of mistakes, is in this manual. They do such a good job for it, uh, the troubleshooting section is crazy. It's got all kinds of problems, all sorts of solutions. It also has a lot of specifications in here because, you know, after thousands of rounds, there are things that get out of tolerance, primarily in your uh, primer feed area and things like that. It tells you how to fix all that. And besides, they don't want to answer the phone and answer the same stupid question 75 times a day. So they've gone to great lengths to put that here. Like I said, against man law, but I ain't going to tell nobody. So just don't go to the experts on YouTube like I do, and then only have to come back to the, the manual because it's all right there. So that's some of the things that I found out, discovered, learned, made mistakes on in my little short career of about 7,000 rounds or so. Maybe you picked up something from that, but I think you're going to really love this press if you buy one or any of the Dillon presses they're awesome and get used to your machine know how it feels and uh, it'll go a long way with you if you take care of it it'll certainly take care of you so got any comments or questions I know you'd like to share them with the class put them there down below if you like our little goofy videos give us one of these go look at some of those other videos too I've got one on you know uh, a new brass cleaner that I found that I think is just awesome you might want to check that out so until next time, you guys be safe, keep the muzzle pointed downrange, and we'll see you out on the range. Adios.